Hi, I'm Katerina Gassette, and I am a lifelong entrepreneur and business owner. And I'm going to take a few minutes today to just explain to you about my journey and my path, just so you understand where I'm coming from. And that will help you develop whether you would want to work with us or not. But also it would help to shed some light on my experience to know if you should continue to watching my YouTube videos and my trainings that I offer and also a lot of other things. So just to establish some rapport, get to know you, you can get to know me. I think that that's really important as I'm a very authentic and transparent business owner. So I have been an entrepreneur since a very young age. So I believe the first time I ever got a job, I was 12 years old, actually, and I was hired to be a teacher to children who couldn't read during the summer program. And I actually got a real paycheck. It was pretty amazing. At that time, I had a little helper, and it was difficult to take care of all of these inner city children without help. So I had a little helper that volunteered in the class, and I learned at a very young age the art of delegation. Fast forward a few years, I became a model when I was a teenager after pretty serious bad roads, which we won't get into in this video, but I ended up being a model for a while and an actress. And during that time, I learned more about delegation because as a model, I had to only had to show up at my appointment, right? At whatever audition I had or whatever my manager said, okay, or my agent said, you got the job and you need to be at such and such a place at such and such a time, you know, those kind of things. So that was an industry where you really learn about outsourcing and delegation because you have someone doing your makeup, you have someone doing your photography, you have a manager, you have an agent. So everything is pretty much taken care of for you, except for you've got to stay skinny and, and be where you're supposed to be and do what you're told. So that was my really big example when I was very young of that's how I knew a business should be. And I wanted my future businesses to kind of look like that. I went in to be, after that, I became a designer of clothing. And again, I, I realized the things I didn't like to do. I was very young. I loved to design clothes. I loved to sew. But I didn't like to take the measurements on the customers. So I hired somebody, a girl from the high school, local high school, who was around my age, to come and help me do that part. So again, I learned delegation and outsourcing. These is all way before the internet. So there was no computers. There was no cell phones. There wasn't even fax machines in those days. Now, most people don't even know what a fax machine is. But back in the day, it hadn't even been invented yet. So everything had to be done like from the ground up. So fast forward, and then I'll tell you another time a story about how I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So then fast forward, I became a realtor and I became, and I've been a realtor for over four decades. I also owned Taekwondo schools for over 15 years, brick and mortar Taekwondo schools. And then I have other businesses too. So currently I'm, and then fast forward to today with the internet and everything, and I have seven income streams, seven businesses that I run, and some of them are almost old hands off. Some of them, you know, if I have hands off, then they just don't produce as well, even with outsourcing. And then others do very well with outsourcing and virtual assistants. So when I, when we were doing real estate in Florida, I lived in Florida for 27 years and went through about three recessions there. And I will just give you an example of kind of what happened with some of our learning and experiencing of virtual assistants. So what happened was if you bought a house, so let's just say day one, you buy a house in 2008, at the beginning of the year, let's just say, I don't know the exact dates, of course. And you bought the house for 600000 You went to sleep that night. You woke up the next morning. It was worth 300000 so immediately, that recession pretty much destroyed the values in Florida. And we were the first state to experience this kind of recession where the values in the homes dropped more than half. This created a need to do short sales because so many people had bought homes and could not afford the payments. They were taking out HELOCs on their house. This was a huge HELOC crisis. I think the banks had to be bailed out. It was a big deal. Now, at this very time when this first started, Countrywide was still in business. And my husband and I, my, we owned a real estate brokerage and we started doing short sales. Now, let me put that in perspective for a minute. Nobody was doing short sales at the time. I was the very first blogger to blog about short sales. In fact, so new that all the SEO gurus around the country would make fun of me when they would see what I was doing 
because they said nobody was searching for short sales. But I knew better because people were actually calling us from the internet and they told us they had found our blog, my blog, and that they needed to list their house as a short sale. We went on to ranking number one for so many terms that people were searching for. I was blogging every day and I was taking in, doing all the lead intake for the short sales. We were getting four to seven listings a week. There would be months where we would have, we had one investor invested who listed 21 of his properties and his whole investment portfolio to help us get it all short sold. So that's what we did. And nobody was, no realtors were doing it. Attorneys didn't even know what it was in Florida. And so we really had a corner on the market and we really capitalized on that. So from there, so that from there, I developed pretty soon, people started asking me, especially real estate agents, started asking me, well, how are you getting all these listings? And I would explain, and then can you teach me? And can I hire you as a coach? And so this started going on. So I started coaching. I started consulting. I started outsourcing. And during that time in 2007, I knew I had to start outsourcing. That was the biggest pivot. Because remember, from my past history, I always knew that I needed to have assistance in my businesses or they wouldn't grow. So it was the same thing in the Taekwondo schools. I always had hired, I hired salespeople, I hired instructor, instructors, we had student instructors. It was a big operation. With my real estate career, same thing. I would always hire assistants. I would hire my kids to help me, whatever it was. So when we got to this point where we had so many listings, I couldn't even get them online to market them. And it was crazy. And so I hired a guy in the Philippines. And he started working for us, turned out really well after I had quite a few disappointments here in the U.S. with virtual assistants. So I hired this guy in the Philippines and I started helping him, training him to know what to do with our marketing, writing our listing descriptions and all of these kinds of things, getting them all up on the different websites. And remember, at this day, there wasn't even Zillow. So Realtor.com was there, but not Zillow. It was just starting to form after that. I think ar around that time, it was just coming online, I think. But anyway, at the time, it wasn't any competition to us. So then we got so busy and my VA says, well, I'm too busy now. You have more than eight hours of work for me to do. I can't help you. So how about if I find a friend of mine who will come and help and you can show them how to do it? And I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's not going to work. I don't have time to show somebody else. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up a company over there. And you are going to hire the person and train them. I will pay you and you pay them and so on and so forth. So that's how we started to set it up. Well, pretty soon all of my clients, my coaching clients, all wanted to, and businesses that I was working with, my chiropractor and my dentist and all these people I was doing marketing for, they all want, needed assistance. They all needed VAs to help them. So I started to recommend this guy and his company to all of my clients. And then in 2016, so this was in 2007, 2008. So this was a great relationship for eight years. And then one day he was very sad and depressed and he wanted to close down his company. And I was just devastated because I had all my clients with them and we had all our work with them. So I said, let me think about this. And I really contemplated what I should do. I prayed for a long time about it. And I knew I had to take over the company. So in 2016, I revamped the company. He was pretty much bankrupt at the time. I went through and we restructured the entire company. So what we did was we took, I sent out a survey to all the current clients and I asked them, what is it that you like? What is, your, what is it you don't like about the company? What bugs you? You know, what drives you crazy? But what is it that you love? And the one thing they didn't like, the lack of communication. So to solve that, I created a Trello system for our company. So everything we do is on Trello and that makes it extremely transparent with our clients. They can see all of their tasks going on. They can see the VAs that are working on the different projects. Works out great. The next one was commun and part of that was communication. They didn't like the, oh, that was that, that one there, I'm sorry. But so the other thing, I don't have notes, I'm just doing all this from my heart. So the other thing that people didn't like was that they had to hire for a set amount of hours and then the guy that run the company would find a VA to work for them, right? And that VA would have to do everything. And that's the big problem is no one knows how to do everything. So if the person wanted blogging, the person had to write. Then the person, if the client wanted social media, then they had to do social media. But if they wanted to do SEO, then they had to also do SEO. 
And this became a huge problem because people that are really good at SEO are usually horrible writers. There's some exceptions like me, but usually there's not that many people who can write really well and understand SEO very well because SEO is a very left brain activity. Not so much anymore, but back then it was a very left brain activity. Now you, you have to have creativity even in your SEO practices. So we fixed all of those things and increased our rates, of course. We hired a HR department. I hired an, a CEO and we hired a tech VA. So what, and then the other thing, because people didn't like that their VA didn't know everything, we divided our company into departments. So we have an SEO department, we have a Google business profile department, a blogging department, then we have a social media department and all our social media VAs are certified. We have a ISA department, customer service department, e-commerce department. So we're divided into departments and what our clients get to do is they just buy a block of hours and then we can divide those up between their tasks the way the client's priorities are. So this is a really great way to be able to have people who are actually skilled in those tasks to be doing them for you. Those are the biggest ways that we differentiate our company from other VA companies. This has all just been evolved through all of my experience for over four decades of understanding how to outsource, how to delegate, how to work together with people on a team. This is all really important to me to be able to provide this opportunity not just to you as a business owner, but also to the VAs so that they can improve their lives and they can rise out of poverty. It's like one of my big missions in life is really to help these people in impoverished countries to develop and be able to put food on their table, stay home with their children and work from home. So that's a little bit of my backstory with how I became the owner and founder of Get It Done For Me Now Virtual Services. Please like my video channel here. I do a lot more than just talk about VA services. I have, I teach you about SEO and blogging, setting up your website, chat GPT, AI tools, and other digital marketing things, working with your avatar, a lot of important things. My channel was shut down by YouTube for about six months. Someone had hacked into it and put inappropriate content on it. So they had to suspend my account and it took me a long time to get it back. So a lot of my videos, when I looked through them from this channel, are not published. What happens when YouTube does that is they unpublish everything. And I looked through them and they're quite old. I have videos that are like 11 years old. And I just don't know how, because so there's so many are technical. I don't know if I should publish them or not again, republish them, because a lot of them are obsolete as far as what it teaches. Maybe my Trello videos are still applicable. But I do a lot of Mac tutorials and Mac has really evolved since the times I started doing a Mac tutorial. So I don't think I'll put those back on. And I had some WordPress tutorials as well, which I'm going to redo because there's so many been in, so many advances with WordPress. So I'll be doing those tutorials for you as well. So I hope you like this video and I hope you subscribe to my channel and set up your notifications. And I'm really excited that you're here and that we can help you.